Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. Hope it's been a happy weekend for everyone so far. I know we had a great roundtable last night with SCS Academy. And today's Saturday afternoon interview has been in the making for quite some time. And if you thought you or I had a busy schedule, nope, you don't compared to this young man. Uh, I tell you, he has traveled everywhere from Zephyr Hills and Tampa to Dayton, Ohio and Detroit, Michigan and points in between. And well, not only has he traveled to these places, but he has brought home some incredible hardware uh, as well. Uh, it's weird to say this, but he is officially former astronaut bowling and student athletes stand out now heading to UCF. Please help me give a big Brevard Sports Network welcome to Mr. Logan Harvey. Logan, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, Alan. How you doing? Good, man. It's finally good to get you on and talk to you. And I tell you what, I've uh, we certainly have uh, had some bowlers on here over the last ten days. We had uh, Veronica Petronek on here. We had Mike Harmon Jr. the other night. But I've been trying to catch up with you now for a couple of weeks and. Well, I, your schedule just didn't permit it. Uh, how do you keep up with the travel, with the demands that, I mean, quite honestly, it's like being on the Pro Bowlers Tour with all the traveling you're doing. How do you keep up with it and then manage to take care of all the things you're required to take care of between your senior season of high school and your freshman year of college? You know, it's, it's definitely hard. Um, it, it helps when you have a big supporting family, uh, like my parents and my siblings, they've been a big help um, in letting me be successful in my bowling and uh, also with school because school is the big part. Um, but, you know, it, with my sister, uh, she helped my mom and I travel because she, when we were in Indianapolis, she came up and flew up with us to watch me bowl. And then she ended up staying with us and then drove home with us. So uh, that was a big help. Uh, just little things like that. I mean, she's done last minute trips with me uh, to tournaments in Georgia. Like we drove, I think we left at like 12 a.m. one day and, and went to Georgia just to bowl a last minute tournament that I found out about. Um, and then obviously with my parents, they, they've they always supported me with just uh, emotionally, but also with money and gas and driving me places. You know, that, that was the big thing when I was growing up was like, I, I want to bowl these tournaments, but I can't like, get everywhere on my own. So they were a large help with that. Um, and with just keeping my schedule together, it's, it's definitely hard. Um, I have to I have to remember like things I have. I started like, you know, putting stuff in my phone calendar now because that helps. Yeah. Um, but keeping up with, uh, with my friends and family and like when tournaments are and stuff. But yeah, it's definitely definitely been a struggle for sure. Something I have to think about a lot. Uh, at Astronaut, I want to talk about Astronaut first. Uh, you are dual enrolled there. Um, and, of course, the success that that program has had. Um, I want to give a big uh, birthday shout-out, too, today to Coach Tyler Brewer. I know it's yes. Coach Tyler Brewer's <laughs> birthday, so happy birthday, Coach happy Brewer. Happy birthday, Coach. <laughs> if you're watching. Um, but, you know, I, I tell you, the success that – that that bowling program had from the, the undefeated season to coming up just short last year to this year. Now, I know I've asked you guys are state champs this year. Now, I know I've asked you this question before, um, but for those that uh, maybe, you know, haven't heard, you know, haven't heard it before, what for you uh, was the biggest difference between the team that went undefeated in your junior year to the team that captured the state championship in your senior year? You know, I, I think the main thing was just us growing up as a team. Um, so our, our freshman year, we had a team and we had some seniors that left and they were into bowling. But um, the, the big change was when we, I think it was our sophomore year, when we had uh, the freshmen come in who had already had bowling experience. But what I just said, they're freshmen. Um, so they were new to the program. So it took them the first two years to get it together. But... I mean, really, that that uh, that third year, my junior year, I guess, mm -hmm. um, they they really shined through with, with us going undefeated, or was it? I think it was my junior. 
Yes, my junior year. We went undefeated. We, we won the conference title, but then we came short in districts, like you said. Um, so I think it was just maturity and uh, just growing as a team because they were young. Uh, they were only a year behind us, uh, like the seniors mm-hmm. or whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, I got you. We all grew up together, and that was a big thing. Like That, that helped us uh, become a stronger team and obviously a, a very difficult team to keep up with, I mean, with what we yeah. accomplished. And the fun you guys had was just simply amazing. The, oh, we the, had so the, much fun. The, the, the chain, you know, the strike chain. And, the, I mean, it was always fun to cover and watch you guys. And, I, I, and often I found myself, I'm like, I would go home and rewatch the feeds. And I would go, why didn't I, why didn't I show more? Because I was watching. I, you know, I just, I was like, talk, Alan. You're, you're a broadcaster. Talk. <laughs> but I just found myself watching a lot and uh you guys were just a tremendous amount of fun to cover you know and i gave a lot of credit to veronica petronick the other night uh for you know her involvement in getting local media to cover bowling but i'll tell you zach yeah. zach beckman was a big part of that too and zach stayed on us to get out there so i, I just wanted to make sure zach gets his due in that <laughs> category as well uh we are here uh, with Logan Harvey, former astronaut bowler, is going to be heading to UCF. Uh, mechanical engineering, uh, is that still going to be what you're studying? It is. Uh, we're going to find out uh, with after the first couple of semesters if that decides to change. Um, but I think I want to go down the engineering route, whether that's um, mechanical or chemical. Um, definitely not electrical because <laughs> I, I could not do that. Um, are you, will you be bowling at UCF? Um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, Mm -hmm. It definitely depends on how much time I have. I have a part-time job and then I have school. It's going to just take up a load of my life. Um, So we're going to see how that, how that can fit in and if it can fit in. Um, I definitely have some plans to do some uh, individual bowling on my own uh, whenever I get the time, whether that's uh, bowling tournaments on the weekend or throughout the week. Um, I've had a little bit of success with bowling those adult tournaments uh, prior in the past as, as a youth. But now I'm getting into my adult years. Um, I hope to go around and make some cash. Yeah. Because uh, who doesn't want some cash? No, no, that's right. It just depends on how the schedule works out and if, if I can fit it in. Because um, like you already said, I'm a busy person, so I'm not sure there's, how it's going to work out. There is no doubt about that. Now, I'm going to roll a video of you. There's, there's about a 10-second segment in the video where I forgot to cut the audio out of it. But that's okay, <laughs> that's okay because it's the part where uh, I believe you capture – uh, the national championship. And I want to talk about the national championship uh, when you and, and the astronaut, uh, you, your fellow uh, astronaut bowling club went out to uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, you, you guys, like, what was it, third overall in the country? You guys finished, and there's a big hug from your dad. Uh, yes. You guys finished third overall in the country. But it wasn't easy because what, what are you thinking as you get in here? Here's the part I forgot to cut out. Yeah, that's the last shot. Yep. And there's Coach yeah. Brewer. <laughs> yeah, and, and and so it's – what are you thinking as you get up there? I mean, I think, you know, if, if, if you get up there and hit a strike and, you know, you, you – you, are you trying to get into this guy's head? I mean, how does that work when it's you and another bowler and you're up there and you and you need that strike? What what is it on you? or Take me through that. So I I will be honest, Alan, when I am bowling stuff like this, um, when it comes down to uh, high pressure moments, I try to look at the score as little as possible because Mm -hmm. uh, when for me personally, when I look at the score, I get deep into my head and I start thinking about the wrong things. Um, So when I'm bowling a match like that, all I'm paying attention to is what I'm doing and what pins I knock down, what, what pins I leave up and what I have to make. I'm not worried about what the other guy's doing. Most of the time, when the other guy's bowling, my back's actually turned to them, or um, I'm talking to someone, or I'm playing with my Rubik's Cube or something like that. So uh, really, it's just about me in my own head thinking about what I need to do. That's, that's the trophy. <laughs> I, you know what? i tell you what. Um, you, you, that was amazing to win the national championship. I, I'm not going to ask you what that, who was that gentleman you were hugging there that, that was emotional? Not your dad. Who was the other gentleman? That would be my brother, James Harvey. Uh, okay, James. I, I, you know what? It's none of our business what was said, but take us through that moment. Um, and what's going through your mind uh, at this moment right here when you capture that national championship? 
you know, I, I want to say there's a little story behind my brother first. Um, sure. So he was actually in we a long time before nationals. Like we had been talking about nationals for a while and how it was coming up. My brother mentioned like, oh, I'm gonna be in this area. So he was gonna be in. Uh, uh, he was gonna be in. He was in Connecticut, I think, for for a work event. And mm-hmm. he was like, I want to get to nationals to watch you bowl if I can, if it, at all possible. I want to be there. And so we kind of we were talking about it a little bit, and then come uh, the day after qualifying. So I qualified sixth out of like 215 boys mm-hmm. or whatever it was. So I knew I was in a good spot. And with this tournament, with the format, you kind of want to be at the top in the very beginning. So uh, 6 p.m. that night, he called me. He's like, what's the deal? Like, how'd you finish? I was like, oh, I, well, I finished sixth. And I'm like, that's a good spot. And he's like, well, I'm booking a flight then. And so he booked a flight that night to fly. Wow. I think it's from Connecticut to uh, Dayton. And then the next day comes around he gets on his flight he has a connecting flight to detroit and then i guess the flight before they took off they taxied too long he got to detroit and then he realized he had seven minutes to make it across the entire airport in detroit um and he couldn't do that so he actually missed his flight by seven minutes but he was already stuck in detroit he wasn't going to give up so he actually went and booked a rental car and drove from Detroit to Dayton, which was like a three and a half hour drive just to get there to watch me bowl. And um, the, just the fact that that worked out and he was able to get there and then for me to win the whole thing, it was just, it was very emotional. And like the entire time, luckily we had uh, some long breaks where they were taking a little bit of time, like getting scores and stuff. So it was uh-huh. just like praying, my fingers are crossed, like any extra time to give him for him to get here and be able to watch me just bowl one match. That's all I cared about because I would really suck if he did all that work just to get there and not even be able to watch me bowl. And he ended up getting there. Um, I think he was able to watch three more rounds before the final match, two or three more rounds. And then for me, like I said, for me to win the whole thing and for him to be there, it was just, it was awesome. And you saw the emotion in that clip when I, excuse me, after I hugged my dad, I went to him and it was just, I I couldn't help myself. He, he was already teary eyed and just me hearing that. I'm like, I, I can't help this. And I just, my eyes started watering up. I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, you, I, that's got me emotional. That is <laughs> that is an amazing. I think that is one of the best stories, Logan, I've ever heard about family or friends wanting to get, and if not the best story I've ever heard. <laughs> that is at, kudos to what, how you know. A lot of times, you know, with you being in high school, and how how much older is your brother? He is 10 years older than me. Okay. So he's, and, and he's up there. That's, well, that's the same exact uh, difference in age between my brother and myself <laughs> is 10 years. So I get that dynamic. I really do. Man, I tell you what, uh, that's awesome. And you guys need to keep that closeness uh, because it, it is, as, as you get older in life, it is. And I know it's got to make your parents proud because yeah. parents want nothing more in life than all the hard work that they've put in to see the kids get along after they're out of the house. I mean, it's the greatest feeling in the world to them. So kudos to you and your siblings for uh, the love that you guys have for each other. Um, yeah, for sure. We're here with Logan Harvey. Uh, you win that national. What this moment right here? Uh, I mean, you're hugging everybody. What is going through? I know things are going on around you. When you finally had an opportunity to sit down and think for a couple of minutes to yourself, you are the 2021 United States National High School Bowling Champion. What are you thinking about? You know, so when I, with the way the format worked out, um, I ended up qualifying the number one seed. Mm-hmm. And um, doing that allowed me to get a bye into the top four. So I went, I went, I, Qualified number one went straight to the championship match, and uh, the other four bowlers, uh, other three bowlers, had to ba- battle it out for the second spot. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and after I finished that last game, I shot like 256 against some uh, one of the. I think he was from Centerville. I can't remember his name, but I knew that I had like a solid game that was just going to jump me up. And I went back to my dad, and he's like, "Turn around." And they had from the beginning, they had the trophies displayed, which uh-huh. you haven't seen is right here. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Um, they had the trophies displayed, and he said, look at look at those up there. You get to decide which one you want, and it was either first or second. And it's like, no matter what, you got either 
either one of those. You just you get to pick now. Now it's your choice to decide which one you want. And that was another point where I got a little emotional because I was like, man, I I really just I did that. I secured my spot. And even if I walked away with second, I would have been fine. So after I was able to go over there and hoist that trophy up, I was like, man, this this feels great. And having every all my whole team behind me and, and my brother and my dad, and it just felt awesome. And you know what? It takes a couple of days to sink in uh, before you really realize what just happened. Um, after that, after I uh, went through the trophy presentation and got all the pictures taken, I went back into a room and FaceTimed my mom and my sister and my sister's boyfriend. And uh, we kind of just talked and I, I got to chat with the whole family. And it was even though they weren't all there, they were all watching. My dad was live streaming the whole time. So they all got to watch. And I guess there was some some issues in the last match. And my mom got a little nervous because she couldn't see the whole match. But uh, just everybody got to witness it. And it was just awesome. Like I said, for the, the things that worked out and for that all to happen, it was just it was awesome. Now, you don't get much time to rest because you come home, mom's got the car packed, <laughs> and you guys are driving to Detroit, Michigan for yes. Teen Masters, uh, and, then Indian, and, then, and then Indianapolis for Junior Gold. Um, I, I mean, Logan, I mean, that, how, how were you even able to bowl after Dayton? I mean, it blows my <laughs> mind, but... Um, take us through the team masters experience because you still you're still eligible to compete in that in 2022 up to 2022 before you age out and then I think you can still do junior gold U20 division right yes so what's that what do you what do you what do you got I mean that's a long car ride from here to Detroit so <laughs> yeah. I mean take take us through that experience I saw the pictures I was trolling the Facebook page looked like you and your mom had a great trip. Oh yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I think the drive from Florida to Detroit was uh, I think it was around I want to say fourteen hours. Yeah, it's um, a hike. So it's it's a hefty drive. Um, so we let me look at my calendar real quick. I can get you dates yeah. to figure out. So we got back uh, June twenty second from nationals. Uh, uh huh. And then we got back on the road June twenty sixth. So I had four days in between nationals and Detroit. Uh, to basically figure out what the heck I was going to do to prepare for Teen Masters. Um, I went and got a couple lessons from my coach. I talked to him for a little bit. And then uh, I we packed the car and we just we headed out. Um, there wasn't much to it. We left Saturday. I think we got there. I think we got there Sunday night. Mm -hmm. um, we stopped in Virginia because we couldn't make the whole drive ourselves. And then... Uh, I was, we were in the hotel in Detroit and I was, I was just ready to go. I mean, I, I was How, ready to bowl. I was excited. How'd you do there? So I finished seventh mm -hmm. out of, um, 220, yep. 230 boys. But, uh, the thing with this tournament, so it's, in my opinion, I think it's probably one of the hardest tournaments, mm -hmm. um, youth bowling tournaments out there. Um, I've been doing this one since 2016. So I was, it was my sixth year competing. Uh, previous years, I'd finished uh, 18th and 17th. So before this year, my best finish was 17th. Um, so to come back and, and finish seventh this year, I was I was proud of myself. But honestly, I could have finished a little bit higher. Um, mm -hmm. I left quite a few pins out there. Um, unfortunately, I missed missed a handful of spares that I shouldn't have. But um, with with what I did at nationals, and then come come back and and do this at Teen Masters, I think I averaged 211 for. 42 games, which um, which is a lot of games. And that's that's usually the damper on the summer is uh, Teen Masters because it's such a hefty tournament. If you make the top 18, uh -huh. you have to bowl so many games. And uh, I actually – I was starting to deal with some finger issues um, come come towards the last couple of days. I'll bet. I was, just, I was packing some super glue on my finger and then smacking it with some of my rosin to, to pack it up, basically just – doing what I can to get past the week because uh, it was starting to rip open a little bit. Create new skin, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I would use new skin, but that stuff burns and I'm a little it, baby. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people would say, well, do you do all this for just the fun of it? Well, the answer to that question is no, because college isn't cheap and there's abundance of scholarship money available. And my research tells me that you've, uh, through all of this this summer, um, about two thousand dollars in scholarship money you've earned, right? Yeah, so uh, I got a hefty amount from Teen Masters, and this is actually 
uh, the past two, when I went and finished 17th and 18th, it was like uh, 400 or so dollars. Nice. But then to come come this year, I got like 1150. I was like, wow, that's 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 a good amount. It's a lot more than I was expecting. So that was exciting. Yeah. Um, so it definitely does help to have something uh, to reward your performance, um, and I can put it off to the side and pay it forward for college in a couple mm-hmm. of years. Because yeah, college is. College is rough. It's it's crazy expensive. Oh yeah, and then um, in the I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Florida State uh, USBC, you picked up some scholarship money there too, as well, right? Yeah. So that was a tournament that happened just a couple weeks before we left for nationals, I think. But it it had multiple weekends to go through, um, mm-hmm. and so people like I bowled the first weekend. I think there was four. Four weekends or so so mm-hmm. it didn't end until i think we were bowling team masters and i actually got like around 550 from that i won the uh all events section of that uh the scratch all events which was my total for nine games and then i tied for first place in scratch singles which was my total for three games and then i was up there for all events with handicap but then i kind of dropped as the weekends went on so I got I got some money from for actually tying for first, which was kind of funny, um, and then also winning the scratch all events part. I got I got I think around five fifty for that. So that uh, added on, which was nice. I'm looking at the score sheet here. Uh, you get the highest score out of anybody on this on this entire sheet. Two thousand one hundred twenty nine pins. Um, next closest guy to you, two thousand eighty one. I mean, I mean yeah. that's in, that's incredible. Great job uh, there. You. Is it? You know, I guess for you, you know, like you said, you'll make the determination whether or not you're going to bowl in college. Where do you see yourself in five years, Logan? So five years, that puts me at 2026. Yeah. Um, I would hope to see myself bowling some more uh, PBA regionals, some mm-hmm. uh, some maybe even some national tour stops. Um, so the thing with college bowling, I haven't – with this year at least, um, I decided I wanted to take a year and stay home. I wasn't ready to leave my family yet. With everything that we had been through with 2020, um, we actually, we came, we got a lot closer as a whole family and I just couldn't see myself just dipping out of here right after I got back from junior gold because that's what it would have been. It would have been, I would have had maybe a month depending on what school I went to, but not a whole lot of time after junior gold, I'd had to pack up and leave and then I, I just wasn't ready for that. So I decided that I, at least for this first year, I was going to go to UCF. Um, and then I went and bowled junior gold. And what I did there was I just tried to get my name out there to coaches that maybe weren't aware of me. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't do a very good job uh, the past couple of years getting my name out there to coaches, um, finding coaches to email and saying, hey, my, this is my name. I'm interested in your program. It's hard to find schools with engineering and bowling. And they're uh, fully funded by the school or they're not necessarily a club. Because uh, then you have to do fundraising and you don't get to go to all the events. So it was hard. There's only a couple schools really that I can think of off the top of my head that are big bowling schools with good engineering programs. So that was that was definitely a tough thing to, yeah. to figure out. And I just didn't do my homework well enough. Um, I didn't email enough coaches. So when I came to Junior Gold, my goal was, you know, I'm just going to get my name out there. Uh, just put, write my name down. That's all I have to do. They can... They can look me up later and, and see if they want to watch me or if they want to reach out to me. And I actually had a couple of schools email me after I got back. Um, I talked to a couple of coaches, uh, Doug Spicer from Concordia University. He's one of the first people that ever like reached out to me and said, hey, I really like the way you throw the ball. I think you'd be great for our program. We were actually in his area. We went and visited the college that same week. That was for 20, uh, 20, 2019 Junior Gold. Um, so we were in the area. His school is actually up in De- Detroit. And we just went and visited. Unfortunately, they didn't have engineering, um, so, but we still got to visit the campus, talk about the bowling program and all that. And that guy has been great to uh, helping me with this past year, Junior Gold, just kind of talking to coaches for me and getting my name out there. He's he's a real advocate of, of me and my name and, and my uh, my form, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah. So that's been, that's been a big help. I really appreciate him doing that. Um, so it's been tough, but yeah, you know what? You keep rolling it, let's spinning it like you do. Uh, I, I don't think that that'll be an issue. Um, I'm, we're gonna when we finish up, I want to talk about your family a little bit more. But I, I'm going to ask you some questions first. You and I actually have something in common. Uh, you're left hand and left eye dominant, <laughs> but you bowl right handed. I'm right handed, but I played hockey. I'm a left handed shot. I, when I throw a lacrosse stick, I'm a left handed shot, and I'm more comfortable from the left side of the plate. 
Um, are we weird? <laughs> well, I, don't, I think we're actually a little a little unique, Alan. I will say. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't know where the left handedness came from. Uh-huh. Obviously, it's just like a, I guess the thing you're born with. It kind of just whatever you start using when you're a baby is is what you go with. Um, so I, I think when I was in school or whatever, I learned to write left handed. That's probably what it was. But then when yeah. I go bowl, I would uh, bowl with my family on the weekends and. All of my family would bowl right-handed. Even my brother, actually, who is also left-handed, but he would bowl right-handed. Um, and I think it was just kind of the, just the, I don't know what the word is, but like being around them and seeing them do it that way. As when you're young, you want to learn. You just learn by the people who love you. I think that's all it was, honestly. Um, I remember when I was younger, I used to bowl with these two fingers, my index finger, and my middle finger, which is what you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to use your middle and your ring. And I thought that was funny too, but. It was just uh, not inspiration, yeah. but I think just for my family. Um, and I've actually been working on my left-handedness a little bit for bowling, okay. and I'm, I'm not bad. I, I, if I would have known that a little bit a while ago, I might have actually switched hands because the left-handers sometimes seem to have an advantage. But uh, it's kind of cool to, to be able to do both sides. It's, yeah, it's like switch hitter on the, uh, on the on the bowling lanes. That'd be kind of cool. You've done some pretty neat things. For those that don't know, been in, you've done uh, partnered up with celebrities. Tell uh, t- tell us a little bit about some of the cool things that you've been able to do because of bowling. Yeah, so whenever I I kind of I don't want to say I forget about these things, but sometimes they'll just pop in my brain and I'm like, oh wow, that was because of bowling. Like I I get to do these awesome things. So uh, 2017 Teen Mas- 20, 2017 Teen Masters, I won, I got second place in the JV division, which is a thing they had then, where it was like the um, I, uh, I forget what the age gap was. I think it was like under 15 was like considered JV. Uh-huh. And um, so I got second place in that division. The guy who got first place was actually a professional bowler's son. So um, because I got second place, Gary Beck, who's the tournament director, invited me to um, and asked me if I wanted to participate in Chris Paul, uh, Chris Paul's Celebrity Invitational that he does every year. Uh huh. And uh, since the guy that got first was a professional bowler's son, he was actually out of the country or would be out of the country that time. So he couldn't participate. So then the spot went down to me. So when Gary reached out to my mom and I, we were like a little confused because like this is this is weird. We'd never heard of this before, but also excited when we started getting the details of it. So come 20, like it was November of 2017, but it actually aired in 2018, I think. Yeah, um, we were we flew out to um, Texas. I can't remember. I guess it was Houston because that's where the Rockets are. Yeah, so oh, yeah. it's Houston. We flew out to Houston, and uh, we we went to this bowling alley. We actually had some friends friends that lived there, so we stayed with them. And then they were they live in Katy, so it was a little bit of a drive there, but not terrible. And then we get to this bowling alley for this event. It's actually uh, before COVID. It was aired on TV uh, for multiple years. I can't remember when they first started it, but it's also on YouTube if you guys are interested yep. in watching it. It's the 2018 CP3 Celebrity Invitational. And uh, I got to bowl with people like uh, Chris Paul, uh, James Harden, um, Oscar Nunez, I think is his last name, from The uh-huh. Office. Yep. Um, and then some actual prof- professional bowlers like Pete Weber, uh, Bill O'Neill, uh, DJ Archer, a lot of big names. Terrell Owens was there. Um, I actually got to practice with Terrell for uh, like an hour, I think, before the event. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's funny because some of them are actually like decent bowlers. Uh, Mookie Betts is there too. Mookie Betts is is a really good bowler and he even though he plays baseball he's he's had a 300 game before he's he's bowled a couple of uh, pba events really so, mookie bet yeah he's 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 quite the bowler actually wow did you get an opportunity have you ever had an opportunity to meet the guy i was reading your bio have you ever had an opportunity to meet the guy uh, i if i say his last name wrong let me know chris prather um the guy I've, that uh, prather is that the the guy that Prather. you would Prather, the guy you would want to have dinner with. Have you ever had an opportunity to meet him? Um, you know, PBA bowler. Um, have you ever met him? I have not, unfortunately. Um, but man, I love watching that guy bowl. He's just he's so smooth. His he, he it looks like he's like bowling in slow motion almost. And then mm-hmm. when he comes out of the ball, it's just like just like it's it's beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I haven't met him before, but it'd be cool to have it have a nice dinner date with him. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. $223,000 in cash earnings since 2015. I think he's done pretty good out there <laughs> yeah. spinning the ball. Well, Logan, as we get set to wrap up here, I mean, we've talked about so much. 
But the thing that I absolutely love about you and your entire situation is how grounded you are, how humble you are. I also love the fact that your family's so close. Um, your dad, Chris, your mom, um, you know, your biggest fans, your brother. Hearing that story about your brother uh, traveling from Connecticut to, to make it in time to see you win the national championship is an amazing story. What would you want to say to, to, you know, because maybe you don't get to see a lot of people here in the county before you head over to UCF or whatever, but what, what would you want to say about your high school bowling career? I'm going to turn it over to you and let you just kind of do your thing. Well, I, I would say I had a, a pretty in, in, I mean, uh, it was a, it was a fun high school career. I'm, my, the words are slipping my mind right now, but um, it, it definitely does help to have as many supporters as I do behind me. Um, over the past summer, the amount of people that have reached out to me, and especially after nationals, just were were following me and said they loved watching me bowl, and and they can't wait to see what the future has for me. It's just it feels so nice. Um, and I have I'll just have random people text me and say, oh, how'd you finish? Or congrats on what you did, and all the responses I had on Facebook and stuff. So. It, it definitely does help to have that big group behind me. But with high school, it was, man, it was so much fun. I mean, we we went 16 and 0. We uh, we won conference. We were running up runner runners up the districts. Uh, we went to win state, which uh, my brother was actually there to watch that too. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, and I want to. say It's tough between winning state and winning national as an individual. It's tough which one. I mean, obviously, I have this nice big trophy behind me to right. commemorate nationals but we also get state rings uh soon we should be getting those soon um but both experiences were just both times we had the whole team was there whether it was behind me watching me bowl or whether it was with me on the lanes fighting for that title so just just to have those group of guys with me and just to be able to share those memories and even the stuff we do off the lanes, like after nationals, we just had such a fun time just hanging out as a, as a, as both teams actually with the girls and boys, and just just a family pretty much. It was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I didn't, I had some good some good uh, uh, records, I guess not records, but acknowledgments through my high school career. I mean, I averaged, I had the high average of two thirty nine in, mm -hmm. in twenty nineteen. Um, so there's definitely some stuff I have to be proud of and some memories that I've made that I'll remember for the rest of my life, like winning state or winning nationals. And it sucks. It doesn't suck. Third, you can't complain about third, but third at nationals, like we definitely could have, could have ran for that, that first spot. I think, I think we, we just got tired, which is totally fine. The boys are still young. They still have another year or two, which is cool. Um, but just the stuff we, we put out there will probably go down as one of the best bowling teams astronaut has ever seen um we'll have a, we have a big banner in the in the gym already and i don't think that's ever going to get taken down um coach deese is is wanting to set up a uh, a trophy case for the future he actually he wants to borrow my trophy for like a weekend because he wants to make a replica of it to put it in his trophy case but i i definitely think we've we've set some history for astronaut and brevard in general and it, i think it's pretty awesome to to be able to do that with with my team that we that we've built for the past couple of years. Well, I tell you, you know, Coach Dex is uh, to hear his story about how he became the bowling coach <laughs> from football is quite amazing in and of itself, and he's hooked, um, and so am I. And a lot of that is because of what you and uh, your team. Uh, has done out there in the alleys and of course uh, the great support staff you have you know talking communicating with your dad behind the scenes about a lot of things and you know the bowling community is a treasure of a community it is a tremendous family they have embraced us here at Brevard Sports Network we will forever be grateful for that so thank you and Logan thank you for allowing us to be able to cover you the way that uh, we have, and man, it's been a lot of fun watching your success. I, I, uh, true story. The day you won the, uh, the when you won nationals, uh, there was actually another interview that night. I was supposed to record, and I rescheduled it because I wanted to make sure that I got to see you win uh, the nationals. <laughs> and then uh, the funny story was, I wanted pictures so I could put the post up and let everybody know. And of course. Your dad was right there to save the day with that <laughs> yep. as well. Logan, 
man, buddy, good luck. Thank you, and um, have a good one, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just want to say real quick, uh, we, we all here in Brevard are extremely appreciative of what you've done for the bowling community, especially because, you know, my my sophomore year, no one knew about bowling. At the school, we were we were nothing. We weren't a team. We were just like, oh, they're the bowling guys. Kind of like, not to be rude to anyone, but it's kind of like the chess club. Like, no one really talks about it a whole lot. <laughs> I hear you. Um, but with, with what you've done and what Deese was able to do with the school for us to just explode out of nowhere and have everyone at the school reaching out, asking how we're doing and everyone just in Brevard, like being able to follow along, it's been, it's been really awesome. So we're all very extremely appreciative of what you guys have done and getting, getting Brevard bowling out there as a, as a sport. We, we thank you a lot. Well, that means the world to us, means the world to me. He is the 2021 20, United States National High School bowling champ and part of the reigning uh, Florida FHSAA bowling state champion astronaut War Eagles, Logan Harvey. For Logan Harvey, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski here on the Brevard Sports Network. Stay tuned. we got a big week of sports coming up, culminating with the first of three coaches shows next Thursday from walk-ons. Uh, a little later on today, you'll see uh, our volleyball preview of the Merritt Island Mustangs. Once again, for Logan Harvey, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. And again, happy birthday, Coach Tyler Brewer. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody.